Hi everyone. As I said at the end of the previous vodcast, we will devote two vodcasts to the originality report, as it is the most important part of the Turnitin experience. This is the first of the two, and in this one, we will familiarize ourselves with the ins and outs of the report. Now, a little while after you have submitted your assignment, depending on how busy the server is, it could take anywhere from 2 minutes to 24 hours, your originality report will be generated by the program. The originality report is the report wherein you will see whether or not your assignment or your work was plagiarized. Now, once the report has been generated, you will see that the departmental homepage on Turnitin will change to show a percentage next to your submitted assignment. Clicking on this percentage will open up the full originality report in a new window. Let's have a look at each one of the aspects of the report, starting at the top left-hand side corner over here. Firstly, all of the information regarding the assignment that you have selected is displayed, including the class and assignment number, along with the due date. Now, clicking on this little drop-down arrow will allow you to toggle between assignments and classes. You will see that we have originality selected over here. For most of the modules, this is the only applicable option as we will neither be grading or marking your assignment on Turnitin, nor will we have other students mark your assignment, as in the case of peer mark. This might, however, be different from one module to another, so be sure to consult your tutorial letters and the MyUNISA page for each respective module, as in the case of honours degrees. At the top right-hand side of the report, you will see the similarity index in percentage of your work. Now, this number is an important one. First of all, you need to understand that this is not a plagiarism percentage. It does not indicate how much of your assignment is plagiarized. Rather, it indicates the amount of similarities in the assignment with another source. Of course, if you did plagiarize, this percentage will show it. But, it also shows phrases not paraphrased or not paraphrased enough, not correctly, etc. Now, very important to note over here firstly is that in most instances, if your similarity index is over 50%, we will not accept your assignment or chapter or proposal for marking. That is to say, your work will be returned to you unmarked. So, if your similarity index is over 50%, you will need to revise and resubmit your assignment. And we'll talk more about revising and resubmitting in the next podcast. Now, directly following your similarity index, you will see the match overview that makes up your similarity score. The match overview offers the list of sources that were found to be similar to your work in order of similarity, with the source most used or most similar right on top. In this case, as you can see, the assignment has a 1% similarity to another source, the first one listed. This is obviously a good assignment that I have over here, but this is not always the case. Have a look, for example, at this report that I have over here. Now, as you can see, the match overview in this case shows a 26% similarity to another source. Now, this is much too high. This might mean that I overused the source, that I plagiarized from it, or that I did not adequately paraphrase when making use of it. Either way, I need to reconsider and revise my use of it as it seems to be a problem. Even if I made use of referencing when I cited this source, it could still amount to plagiarism since I used too much of it all at once. This is referred to in academia as overuse of a single source. Remember, any academic work is enriched by making use of various sources during argumentation. It offers theoretical depth to your work, and you are sure to move away from plagiarism a little more with each and every source that you integrate into your discussion and line of argumentation. 
Okay, now you will see that the match overview list is interactive. And when you mouse over one of the matches, you will see that an arrow appears on the right hand side of this little block. Clicking on this arrow will simultaneously take you to the original source and the place in your assignment that corresponds to it. Take note that some of the sources might not be available for viewing due to copyright restrictions. Now, corresponding to this list, passages in your assignment is highlighted and flagged with the number of the source in different colors. For example, on this page, you can see similarities to source 1 as well as similarities to source 30. Now, below the match overview column, you will see two important icons displayed. The first is this little funnel shaped icon <laughs> and it can be used to set the filters and settings of your report if your lecturer or module coordinator made that option available to you during the setup. The course coordinator might also have already entered the default settings for your report but please make sure that the quotes and your bibliography are excluded just as matches with less than five words are. Using multicolor highlighting will help you with the interpretation of your report. You will immediately uh, be able to see corresponding sources. The second icon next to the one shaped like a little funnel gives you the option to view your report as text only. Now clicking on it will show the same report but in a different format. Remember this function because we will be making use of this text only format again when we discuss inserting your report into an assignment as in the case of an honours degree. Now to toggle back and forth between the different views you can just click on the document viewer button over here in the top left hand corner of the document. Now, the last two aspects that you will see on your screen, which we need to talk about, is at the bottom left-hand side over here. Clicking on the first icon here will give you all of the report information in summary. Clicking on the second icon will give you three options. The middle option allows you to PDF the digital receipt of your submission for printing. Now this is the same receipt that you would have received in your email inbox and that we spoke about in the previous podcast. The first option allows PD a PDF download of the entire report for printing and saving. It is recommended that you do a download of the full PDF report and save it for your records. When you do, however, just please bear the following two aspects in mind. Firstly, the file that will be created is usually very large, so it might take quite a while, especially when the server is busy, to generate. Secondly, if your internet settings are of such a nature that pop-ups are blocked, you will have to disable this before you can do a download for the report. Now, once the report is done downloading, you have the option to either open or save the PDF report. We recommend that you go ahead and save the report immediately. That's just for a quicker download. Now, when the report is saved, wherever you specified it would be, it will open up in any Adobe PDF viewer, but please take note that the color highlighting will be lost on the default settings, the links will no longer be active, and the list of similar sources will now only appear at the end of the report. So it's for this reason that we prefer you to work in the text-only format, as explained before, when you are interpreting your report. You can also save this text-only format by clicking on the download icon at the top right-hand corner of the screen. A much quicker download of an HTML file no will now ensue, and your saved report should look similar to this. Now, the sources are highlighted in color and the links will remain active, although the list does appear before the actual text of your assignment. Now, once you have this report, you are ready to start interpreting it to make sure your work is free of plagiarism and structured in the best possible way. Good. Now that we know what the report looks like, what all of its features are, we are ready to interpret it. And this is what the next podcast will focus on.